This is the Apocrypha of Azazel podcast. I am Azazel. I am reading through a series of audiobooks. This is chapter two of book one called The Great Deceiver. So if you haven't listened to chapter one, I encourage you to go back and do that. I also want to remind you that we do have a website, apocryphaofazazel.com, where you can read every chapter online, the full text version. You can also join my book club and interact with me that way as well, too. And who doesn't want to interact with a god, the god of death? In the last episode, I told you about the true story of creation and how it developed with the gods Ah and Z. I also told you about the creation of the Illuminarchs and the Stellar Ones, and we also reviewed how your world came to be created as a result of the war in heaven when evil Zeba and his son Lucifer and me and other minions were cast out and created your world in the process. Now, if you'll recall, at the end of the last chapter, the evil Lord Zebub and his pet son Lucifer use their flawed powers of creation to fill the middle plane with your universe. And then it was that I laid a trap for Zebub. When I drew him to a planet I called Terra and asked Lucifer to create something I called life. Now, if you'll recall, Lucifer never answered that question in the last chapter. Well, now we're going to get his answer. I invite you to join me as we move to chapter two. Chapter two is called The Morning Star for reasons you're about to hear. Are you ready to open this door and walk through with me again? Let's begin. Life? Lucifer continued stalling to my question, unsure of how to proceed. Now, I knew it was a risk to even offer such an idea to Lucifer, since I didn't know if Zebub's little minion was even capable of creating life. More importantly, I also knew that if Lucifer sensed he might fail, he would surely take out his wrath upon me for for giving him such poor counsel. Yet the gamble was worth the risk in my mind, and thankfully Lucifer was game for the challenge. Now, this could be because most of the other Luminarchs were elsewhere in the universe at this time, so perhaps Lucifer figured if he failed, we could keep the blunder private. Now, the experiment I offered Lucifer was to take place on a planet called Terra, which was previously my name for your world. And on Terra for this event was another Luminarch who I had invited specifically to witness these festivities. We'll call her Gaia, spelled G-A-I-A. Now, little did... Gaia know that my plan actually called for Lucifer to marry Gaia's living essence with the atomic elements of the planet Terra. And yes, Gaia was technically destroyed as an individual being in the process of this experiment, but you know, you know as well as I, sacrifices like this are sometimes required in the name of science, and this was one such occasion. There's no sense shedding any tears over my colleague Gaia, because after all, it's due to Gaia's sacrifice that you, the listener, are even alive, so you should be thanking me for the idea, and I guess you can thank Gaia too. In any case... Uh, Lucifer proceeded with his experiment, and unfortunately things didn't go quite as smoothly as I hoped, but in the end Lucifer did succeed in forcing Gaia's existence into the combination with Terra. In fact, Lucifer was so enamored by the results of his work that he even gave himself a new cognomen to mark the occasion, calling himself the Morning Star since he claimed he had brought the dawn of life to a new world. (laughs) Whatever. Now, in spite of my master's pride, to be honest, I was not impressed with his results. I mean, the life Lucifer created on your world, as you well know, is flawed with shortcomings. It was, and still is, finite, difficult, and requires that you, its creatures, survive by preying upon each other to fulfill your needs. I mean, how ghastly is that? But this was the best the self-proclaimed Morningstar could muster, and so it had to suffice for a time... 
And at this point, I should probably admit that this, this entire creation process that I told you about in the last chapter and going on here, this stuff didn't just happen overnight, nor did it take a mere seven days. I mean, that, that absurd figure that some of you actually believe. Rather, the efforts of evil Zebub and his son Lucifer lasted billions of years. I mean, that's based on your measurement of time. But look, I don't want you to get all hung up on this. I mean, I'm merely pointing it out to you for posterity's sake. After all, what's the difference between a day or a few few million millennia where a god is concerned. I don't expect you to understand, but hey, I'm just trying to check all the boxes here. Be that as it may, over time I watched as the planet Terra sputtered with new life. Now it happened in fits and starts, and it didn't help that the planet was still in its infancy from a geological sense. But even still, life on your planet overcame the odds and it survived. More importantly, I learned a great deal by observing it all, and eventually I became convinced that the planet Terra held within it certain secrets that were so powerful that whoever controlled these secrets may well control all of creation. Now naturally, I wanted that certain someone to be me, but the problem was there was little I could do to further my own plans so long as Lucifer and Zebub remained in this universe. Now thankfully, it was about that same time that Zebub came to an important realization and its wrath echoed throughout this dimension. This plane of existence is not enough. It will never be enough. I need more. Now behold, this was the crucial moment I had been waiting for, lo, these many eons. And hearing these words, I immediately asked my master, Oh, great Zebub, perhaps you dislike this universe because you know that Illyria still exists within its every fiber. You mean because every fiber is filled with awe, Zebub raged. It's true, the great deceiver's fingerprints are everywhere, Lucifer agreed. How can we be expected to overcome that? Now they say the first step to overcoming a problem is to admit that the problem exists. It seems my master and his little minion had finally taken that step. Naturally, I was ready with a solution. Alas, my masters, Oz's fingerprints are everywhere, and yes, I feel it too, my lords. Yet perhaps ye would like to create a new plane of existence. Maybe one that is bigger even than this middle plane. One that is filled entirely by you? Now, as soon as I said it, I could sense Zebub knew that this was the answer. And inspired by his father, Lucifer then rounded up every Luminarch that had joined him in the rebellion back on Illyria, which unfortunately included me, and in the blink of an eye, we all vanished from your universe. And then it was that Zebub and Lucifer created their own plane of existence, their dimension far bigger than Illyria or the Middle Plane. More importantly, they were successfully able to ensure that it had no semblance of the god Ah anywhere inside their dimension. Or so they thought. Now you may choose to think of the new spectrum they created as hell, but for our purposes of this story, we're going to call it by the name Zebub gave it, which was Illusia. Now, Lucifer installed himself as the king of Illusia, and yes, that was a bit annoying to me, but, you know, truth be told, everything worked out rather swimmingly as far as I was concerned. For just as I had hoped, during the process of creating the dimension called Illusia, evil Zebub had allowed Lucifer to put so much of Zebub's essence into their new dimension that eventually there was no way to separate evil from Illusia or Illusia from evil. Thus, too late did Lucifer and Zebub realize that Zebub's spirit, which was his entire existence, had become trapped in the Illusion plane. And then it was that Zebub tried to break out of its unexpected prison. And failed. Zebub raged. Lucifer roared before the evil one or his son could remember that I was the one who had given them the idea to create Illusia in the first place, I came forward with a solution. 
I know how to break Seabub free of Illusia. How? Lucifer seethed. It would appear that Ah is jealous of you and your father, Master. And sensing Lucifer's annoyed confusion, I quickly continued. The great deceiver could never create the beauty that is Illusia, so when Ah sensed the work of your hand, surely Ah had his little minion Michael and your Illuminati brothers lock us in this dimension. Yet I have discovered a way that will not only help Zeba break free, but will also help you get your final revenge on Ah. Tire me not with your riddles, Azazel. Tell me your plan or risk destruction. Send your most lo loyal Luminarchs back to the Middle Plane. Allow them to destroy it. Then the... What will that accomplish? Lucifer interrupted. My father will still be trapped here. Are you that... Sensing myself on the edge of oblivion, I took a risk and interrupted my master. Zebub will break free! Zebub will break free! I cowered down in fear, certain that the Demon Lord would use the power of Z to destroy me for my impotence. Shockingly, nothing happened. So I continued. I apologize for my interruption, Lord, but my plan is sound. Consider the middle plane is still associated with the god Ah. If we destroy the middle plane, then we break the ties that bind Ah to that universe, and thus we break the bonds that hold Zebub here. Lucifer remained silent, so I proceeded to detail my plans. Ah is the essence of goodness. Zebub is the essence of evil. It comes down to a battle of supremacy. And the only place to have that battle is the middle plane. Therefore, send your Luminarchs to that universe. Task them with destroying all that is good in the middle dimension. When they succeed, the middle plane will be destroyed, and the locks that hold Zebub here will fail. The evil one will break free, and then will storm the gates of Illyria and overthrow the Great Deceiver. The Prince of Darkness pondered, surely consulting with Zebub in the interim. Trying to appear casual, I offered. And as your most loyal Luminarch, naturally I will remain by your side here in Illusia, while my brethren return to the Middle Plane. The suggestion was not what Lucifer had expected. Dost thou not believe in thy own plan? And he began to laugh bitterly, fearing the worst. On the contrary, Lord, I am so confident my plan will succeed. However, I thought you would want me to remain here to advise you. You're walking a thin line, Azazel. Be careful, the Prince of Illusia warned. And even then I could feel Zebub's essence boring into me, searching for some deception on my part. Thankfully, I'd long since sequestered those motives. At last, Lucifer advised, I don't need your advice, fool, and bother me not with your details. You shall be the first to return to the middle dimension. There you shall continue your work, and there you shall succeed in securing my father's release. For if you fail, it will mean your doom, Azazel. And in a flash, I was back in your universe, even to your world, Terra, along with untold numbers of my colleagues who were sent throughout the universe that is known as the Middle Plane. And all of us were tasked with the same mission, destroy that which was good. Now, for my part, I rejoice when I return to Terra, although I'm not sure your world felt the same way. For you see, when I last left Terra, there was but a single landmass on the planet. But my re-entry back to your world was not without some fanfare. I exploded through the interior of your world in such a fashion that I caused certain uh, geological disturbances. So powerful was my return that your Pangea continent broke apart into seven chunks, even as numerous mountain ranges, oceans, and volcanoes emerged above and below the water of your world. Now many of the living creatures of your world were destroyed by the effects of my return, but thankfully your, your world recovered. I have to hand it to Gaia, she always was a bit of a fighter. Millions of years passed again, but eventually I watched as the planet Terra teemed with life once more, this time with various prehistoric giants roaming around your world. And all the while I studied the process of life. And so it was that my plan continued to unfold. I'd successfully gotten rid of Zebub. Now I just had to get rid of his son. Over time, I come up with another idea. But first, I had a bit of a problem to deal with. You see, for starters, Lucifer wasn't as dumb as I'd hoped. Now, when he released the other Luminarchs and I back to the Middle Plane, Lucifer built a hidden failsafe into the process that kept us tied to him. For you see, he could have Zebub recall us to Illusia at any time, or we could return back on our own if we had important news to report, although I don't know why anybody would want to go back there willingly on their own. 
But perhaps most importantly, no matter what, we Luminarchs could only survive for a maximum of 1,000 years on the Middle Plane before we were required to return to our Maker. Now, this was never an issue while Zebub was with us in the Middle Plane, or when we were with it in Illusia. But once we moved to a different dimension, our life force among the Luminarchs began to slowly dwindle. Now, Lucifer claimed this was due to a flaw in the god Ah's original creation of us Luminarchs. And since we couldn't very well ask Ah if that was true, we had to accept Lucifer's assertion. Now, we were told that Luminarchs could only survive for these few centuries on our own before we had to return to the source of our creation to replenish our life force. And Lucifer claimed that his father was the cause of the Luminarch's creation and therefore the source of our life force. So if we wanted to continue surviving when our ever dwindling supply of life force ran out, we then had to return to Illusia to beg Lucifer to allow his father Zebub to give us more. Now, Lucifer called this life force Hellfire, and the process required for us to get more Hellfire was anything but enjoyable. I mean, imagine your worst vision of what it's like to be tortured and multiply that by, oh, infinity, and then maybe you'll have the least bit of insight into what I had to endure. Some Luminarchs were destroyed by the process. Thankfully for me, I was always able to endure it and more importantly, to convince that little demon Prince Lucifer to keep returning me to this dimension. But that didn't mean I was happy about it. And after a few million more years of this, I finally devised a plan to get back at my hated master. For you see, even though Zebub was locked in Illusia, there was a time when its son Lucifer was not. As a result, Lucifer could and often did visit the Middle Plane. And given that Lucifer had the power of Z at his disposal, and that neither the god Ah, nor the Luminarch Michael, or anybody from Illyria seemed to care about this middle plane of existence anymore, Lucifer was, for all intents and purposes, the, quote, god of this dimension. And Lucifer demanded that we treat him as such. I mean, Lucifer even changed his name yet again, now calling himself El, spelled E-L, whenever he visited our dimension. Look at the work of your hand, L. See the life you created. I played along with Lucifer's little game, stroking his ego as he looked upon all that he had created in this universe. And our God saw that it was good, and he was pleased. Sensing my opportunity, I drew L down to the planet Terra, explaining that I was in the process of making progress on the plan to free his father, but that I needed his help with the next step. O oh, great L, shall we create more? And before my master could ponder my request to the fullest, I added, why not perfect your power by creating something more wonderful, perhaps something called mankind? And thus I laid a trap that would forever alter history and eventually led to your creation. <laughs> Well, that's the end of our show for today. Hey, this is Azazel saying I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me give you a taste of what's to come in the next episode. The next chapter is called Behold Man and More. You think you know how man was created? I'm going to tell you the real story. And at the risk of ruining the surprise, let me just whet your appetite by letting you know that it was the god once known as Lucifer, but now calling himself El, and myself, who worked together to create mankind, as well as a host of other life forms that once walked your planet, <laughs> and maybe still do. That's what's coming up in the future. In the meantime, I encourage you to go to my website, apocryphaofazazel.com, where you can sign up for my book club to get notified when new episodes are released, as well as read every chapter of my books right now. It's all at apocryphaofazazel.com, so go there today. In addition, I want to give a couple shout-outs here to thank you. So I want to thank YouTube's audio library for the music you're hearing in the background of these episodes, freesound.org for the sound effects, and transistor.fm for hosting this podcast. Finally, I'll leave you with this. Advice from the God of Death. 
Be careful what you wish for, my friends. It may just come true. Ah! <laughs>